Hey guys, my name is Alicia over at Our Aesthetic Abode. I have been sharing my journey on Instagram for almost four years now. And the first home that we bought, I made the mistake of just going to Home Depot and buying a five gallon bucket of the whitest white I could find. And guess what? We ended up repainting about a year later. Not all white paint colors are created equal. You have to consider LRV, undertones, room orientation, and lighting before you can just head to the paint store and choose whatever white paint your favorite designer recommends. So now my husband Dan and I, we just bought this brand new home. It was built in 1930. It has these very heavily textured plaster walls. Kind of gives an old world feel and I actually love them. They make it feel so cozy in here and I want to find the perfect white to just make it even more cozy. Whatever color we choose for our living room will also continue into our upstairs landing. So that's another factor I'll be considering as I take a look at our samples. Initially, I was looking at samples for neutral colors, but after seeing them in our living room, I decided to go for a color with a higher LRV, something in the white or off-white range. LRV means light reflectance value. It's measured on a scale that ranges from zero, which is a true black, to 100, which is a true white. Every paint color has an LRV, and you can usually find it on the back of the color swatch. Think of this number as the percentage of light that will be reflected. So if a color has an LRV of 11, it will only reflect 11% of the light and is therefore a dark color. These peel and stick samples from Samplies are a crucial part of my process whenever I'm choosing a paint color. They ship overnight, they're hand painted with two coats of the actual paint color, and they carry most major paint brands, making it a one-stop shop. It's so nice being able to move them around the room without the mess of paint. They're easy to mold around trim, casings, and in this case, the extreme texture of our plaster walls. You can also reuse them, by the way, just simply place it back on its sheet and keep it for a future project. It's helpful to learn your room's exposure to natural light, which is determined by the direction your largest windows are facing. But it's not always that simple. Our living room has multiple exposures, making it a little more tricky. So let me show you what I mean. We have Western exposure from this small window in the large opening that goes into our sunroom. West facing light is flat in the morning, but gets intense golden afternoon sun. We get northern exposure from our front door in this small window here. North facing rooms actually get the least amount of light. The light is very consistent, but it's cool. We also have southern exposure coming in from this large opening that goes into our dining room. South facing light means great natural light all day, making it the most ideal exposure. As a reminder, we're also painting upstairs into our landing, which of course gets eastern exposure. East facing rooms get intense morning sun, but can wash out colors in the evening. Every paint color has undertones, even whites. The best way to tell is by comparing to other colors. If you don't have a color deck like this, grab a bunch of free swatches at the paint store and place them on a white piece of paper. This will really help you identify those undertones. So as you can see, I didn't put all 10 samples on the wall. I typically eliminate a few just right off the bat. I've got Benjamin Moore Cloud White and Chantilly Lace, which they're both beautiful whites. But if you look, this one is too similar to what's already on the walls. And this one is just too white for what I'm going for. I also eliminated, this is Benjamin Moore Linen White and Sherwin-Williams Antique White. These were just too warm and too yellow for me. And I'm also going to eliminate this one. I'm sad because I really loved the name. It's Benjamin Moore's Grandma's China. This one has these like violet undertones that I'm not loving here. 
So I'm going to take a closer look at these four in the middle. From left to right, we have Benjamin Moore White Dove, Sherwin Williams Creamy, Benjamin Moore Swiss Coffee, and Sherwin Williams Ivory Lace. Now that I've narrowed it down to these four colors, I want to move them around the room and see how each of them looks in different lighting. I also like to take photos or videos during this phase so I can refer back to them later. And don't forget about the evening as well. See how the colors look at night with the artificial lighting you currently have or plan to have in that room. Doing this allowed me to eliminate Sherwin-Williams Creamy as it was just a little too yellow for me. I'm not sure why, but just this wall here was painted this blue color. So I didn't even bother putting any samples right here because the blue is reflecting off of this wall and the colors are just not gonna show up the way they actually will once this gets painted. Now that I'm down to three colors, I decided to head to Sherwin-Williams and get actual paint samples to test, especially since two of these colors are Benjamin Moore. Color matching is not always going to look exactly the same, so I definitely recommend getting a sample in this scenario. Just like the sticker samples, I tested these colors in multiple areas and ultimately decided to rule out Swiss coffee because I was noticing some subtle green undertones. And then lastly, I ruled out ivory lace because it was just a little too dark in certain areas of our living room. This left me with Benjamin Moore White Dove, which by the way, is a very popular white paint color. But now I understand why. It's just really versatile and has the perfect touch of warmth. Painting plaster walls is really not that different from painting regular drywall. There's just a couple different materials to make note of. For filling holes, get a heavyweight spackle or one that's made specifically for plaster and overfill the hole a little. This product goes on pink and dries white. It also shrinks as it dries, so bigger holes might need a second coat. Instead of sanding spackle, I prefer to just use a damp rag because it's way less messy. So with smooth drywall, I would just wipe it down until it was flush with the wall. But with these plaster walls, I'm just smoothing it until it mimics the texture of the rest of the walls. Don't forget to spot prime those areas you repaired so the paint can adhere nicely. And while the primer is out, get any other necessary spots. In our case, we had this random dark blue wall in our stairwell. So I gave that two coats of primer. That way I didn't have to waste any extra paint. After this, I was able to get started. I did the ceiling first, which I also painted white dove. But I painted the ceiling with a flat finish, which doesn't have any shine to it. And I did the walls in an eggshell finish, which has a little bit of a sheen. I always cut in with my brush first and then come in with the roller. And since I was dealing with a lot of texture both on the walls and the ceiling, I went with a half inch nap microfiber roller. And I'll go ahead and just link all of the tools and materials that I used in the description below. If there is one painting tool I recommend, it's this one. You can use it to clean both bristle brushes and roller brushes, and it only costs $5. Paint brushes aren't cheap, so for me personally, I like to get as much use out of mine as I possibly can.
In our next YouTube video, we'll be doing a simple but dramatic makeover in our guest bedroom. It's going to be good. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel. We will see you next time.